Recorded live in Balcata, Western Australia, the hoon capital of the world, this is Talkin' Power. Gap is what happens uh, when you hold to the floor and crush the man next to you. There's space in between your back bumper and your front bumper. We, uh, in the South, we refer to it as the Gap Band. Well, I think, you know, Formula One is for grown-ups. Okay, episode 41 of the Talk and Power podcast. I'm Nick DeCembre. I'm here with Simon Gonzo Travellini. How are you, mate? Mate, you know, I'm up and down. You're up and down? Up and down, yeah. I'm, I mean, you know, huge. <laughs> well, I was about to say it. Huge win for the Eagles. It was a magnificent win. You know what I want to know, though? That first quarter, hmm. why did Simpson play West Perth instead of West Coast? <laughs> For our listeners of international or eastern states uh, listeners, West Perth actually played the week before and got absolutely smashed. I went to that game. Got thumped. Mm. Yeah, I thought about going, and then I looked at the maths. <laughs> Subiaco unbeaten all season. <laughs> Jared Schofield, a magnificent job he's done for the Subiaco team. They did, actually... Did you know that they not only won the WAFL... Mm. But they won the juniors, the Colts. Yeah. They basically won everything. Yeah, yeah. So now, now, another point on the on the football, before we get into the game, the greatest game that we've seen this season. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, the thing is, the, the great thing about it is I'm sure that even Dockers supporters were barracking for the Eagles because everyone hates Collingwood. I don't know anyone. <laughs> I don't know a single person living... Anyway, look, we, some of our listeners are uh, Collingwood supporters, so look, big cheerio to those guys. Look, I think they played very well. Nathan Buckley, hats off to him, conducted himself very well during the week and during the game. Yeah, it was hats really, if him. you were a Collingwood supporter, it would have been a sad loss. And, you know, there is a few, you know, the discussion about whether the, the free should have been paid mm. um, right at the end. And those of you that watched the game would know what I'm talking about. I mean, it did look like it probably... <laughs> You know, well, the AFL came out today and said that there was no free there, so. <laughs> so. You don't, you don't think we're going, we're going with that? Yeah, we're going with that. Uh-huh. We're, we're going with that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that was a, was a big night. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we lost uh, someone that, that uh, I would argue uh, had more influence than any other single person. Uh, in growing the sport of drag racing during its heyday, and that's uh, Bob Jane, sadly yep. passed, 88 years old. I'm dressed in black to, um, mm. uh, you know, just remember the man. A lot of people would argue that he did a, uh, a lot of bad for the sport, but, yep. I mean, at the end of the day, he, he did own two tracks. Um, he set up NASCAR racing in Australia, and really he was Australia's own Mickey Thompson, Certainly was, and he was also the forefather of Australian touring car racing as we as we know it back then, and as we know it now as well. Yeah, you know he was the leader in the Camaro and and a lot of GM products that, that came to that came in not only into Australia but also raced built in Australia. So yeah, it was a really sad loss to in, have the in, great man gone. Invested a lot of time and money into motorsports and like i said in particular drag racing called the park was the fastest uh, track outside of the usa for mm. many 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 years yeah you know adelaide international as far as door racing uh was an incredible track to run on mm. dead flat just a you know amazing track and you know he invested uh he invested a lot into our sport yeah so yeah. uh no, sad to see him go very sad but what was Apart from the Eagles win, I, I <laughs> Jeremy Martin, Jeremy Martin going rounds. <laughs> I I always talk about drag racing very fondly, but never have I been so proud of seeing that Australian flag out there 
let's paint the picture for our listeners because they probably don't know what what on earth we're talking about. Well, we're referring to uh, No Mercy Nine, the biggest radial race in the world. But that's that's what it would be. Donald Long uh, holds the event, and it was held this weekend in South Georgia Motorsport Park. Fifty grand for the win. Fifty thousand dollars for the that's win. That's American dollars, not Australian pesos. Yep, no, that's right. So they're paying that in greenbacks too. So <laughs> it's cash you take away. So Jeremy Martin went over there, as we spoke about, and he was the winner of Grudge Kings, Po Tung's race uh, back in July. Yep, also $50,000. Yeah. P- pesos, mm. unfortunately, Australian yeah. pesos. <laughs> Packed the car up and went over there. Not only did uh, uh, Jeremy go over there, but Wade Wagstaff as well went over there. And also uh, Jared Wood went over there as well, raced the car over there. And, for... and a few of the, the Aussies were already over there for drag week. Yeah, Harry so, Haig also participated yeah, so as well. I believe well. they tagged on. Yeah, so look, it was great to see Jeremy got through to uh, round three of eliminations, got through the first round, and also got through the second round. He took on Mark, Mark Mickey, Mickey in the second round. The the quickest and fastest radial racer in the world, all time. Yeah. No ifs, no buts. Three sixty two, ET record two hundred and. I thought that was two twenty that one, but two, I could be no. Wrong. But he he set the mile an hour record yeah, as well. Yeah, two twenty. Yeah, yeah. two twenty seven. I yeah, think it was. Yeah. Yep. Huge. I mean, when you consider that's to half track, mm. you know. Yep. He took him on, and uh, he he beat him. Yeah. I mean, Let, let's have a listen to the race here. I mean, you, if you're watching the video version, we'll, we'll show you the video. This is his his second round appearance against Mark Mickey. Let's have a listen. Was, there's an amazing photo that's been taken of, of this race and you can't see Mark in the photo it's only Jeremy's car it's front on I think it's been taken from the end of the track zoomed in and all you can see is a crowd standing behind Jeremy's car cheering <laughs> and the Commodore is making its way down the track and you can see the heat plume coming out of the pipes it's a magnificent photo and really proud moment for myself and, and anyone that's Australian into their drag racing and radial racing in particular both guys had the Australian flags prominent in the burnout, take the flags off, obviously, when they went down the track. But it was really good to see. And we've got to try and get Jeremy on the podcast because I'd really love to have a chat with Jeremy and also Wade as well. I think, I think it's great the Aussies getting over there and um, taking on the best in the world. Yep. Now, in the final, we had Alex Laughlin of Pro Stock fame. He made it to the final. He, that's... Now, is this who, the gas monkey? Yeah, that's him. Yep, yep. yep. Was he driving a gas monkey car? No, 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 no. It was... No um, monkey business. No, no monkey business. It was a screw-blown Corvette. Now, he um, came up against, in round three, came up against Jeremy and took Jeremy out. He, so, he actually beat Jeremy in round three, went on to the final, and took on, believe it or not, Nitrous car. Yep. Nitrous car in the final. Nitrous car got the win. Jeff Nazia. So Funnily enough, a nitrous Camaro. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the same colour as Stevie Fast. Yeah, very similar. Very sort of similar <laughs> colour scheme to Stevie Fast car. That's where it's at. It's all in the colour scheme. Yeah, must I'm actually, we, we're going to wrap the, uh, the BA in white. <laughs> put some blue on there. <laughs> so these guys are really hampered by the weather over the weekend as well. Shocking weather. There was if you haven't gone on the Street Machine website, head over to the Street Machine website. Our friend Luke Newhoff cut some great footage. He must work day and night, Luke. He was filming all day, editing all night. Uh, got some magnificent footage of this event, so head on over there. But yeah, the weather really uh, knocked them about these these guys a bit. So they got it done, but they got it done. Yeah, they got yeah. they got the meeting done. So yeah. hats off to them. Yeah, yep. Now, just in passing, um, we've also had word that Donald Long, the promoter, has extended an invite for Jared Wood to bring the Mustang over there for Sweet Sixteen next year in March. Oh, excellent! Inv- that's an invitation only. And that invitation has been extended to Jared. So Jared will be over there in March for Sweet 16. Yep. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. I think it's awesome. 
So yeah, that's um, that was No Mercy Nine. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know what we're talking about, head on over to their Facebook page, Donald Long. Um, you can search him or go Duck at, Promotion. Yeah, Duck, Duck prom- X promotions. promotions. Yeah, and you can see it all there. So, or alternatively, Luke has a really good um, some videos on the Australians as they progress through No Mercy Nine. Now, No Mercy, uh, No Mercy Ten was the Russian Grand Prix where. <laughs> You don't look happy. <laughs> no, no, look, I mean, uh, uh, hats off to Mercedes and... Uh, Lewis and, Hamilton showed no mercy at all, slaughtering everything. No, nah, nah, and he's driving... I'm going to say it out loud, and I, you know that I'm not a big Lewis uh, lover, but he's probably driving the best he has ever driven, Lewis. I, I will say that. You know, this race here... Um, I think he's, um, he's still pissed off that Ferrari won in his backyard. Yeah, 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 but he's been making them pay for it ever since. <laughs> So, um, Valtteri qualified, got the qualified first, and uh, really got out a, a good, got a good lead away. Um, as it turned out, they pitted. I think it was around about lap, yeah, lap ten. He's pitted, uh, or lap, and um, so Hamilton stayed out. Vettel actually came in lap fourteen in in third spot, and managed to leapfrog. Did the undercut, performed that perfectly. He got back out in front of Hamilton after Hamilton pitted a lap later. But Hamilton was able to get around him about one lap later, showed him a clean set of heels and got and got around him. So on lap 26, we had the, the tactic button press. Now, I don't know if that was actually staged or, or, or whatever, but Toto Wolf um, hit the button, the tactic button, um, and called for Bottas to yield and let um, Hamilton through. Um at the end of the day, they're fighting for a championship, and that gave them a fifty-point lead at the end of the day. So, I look hats off to to Mercedes. I think they're in a position. Are they actually where they allowed to do that? Yeah, Formula One allows it. Yep, yep. So, you know, why doesn't Ferrari just crash him out? <laughs> oh, that's not allowed. No, that's not oh, allowed. <laughs> is that different? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So, um. I just wanted to know your thoughts on that, actually, because I know we posted something on Facebook last night. People have different opinions on on motorsport, but I think it's in in this in the sport it is allowed. It's probably not in the spirit of what we're going to see. But as Toto Wolf said, they're, 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 the harsh reality is that they're fighting for a championship. You want to know my opinion? Mm. <sighs> you know, it's a hard one, Nick. I um. I think that I'm going to sit on the fence on this one. Okay. Just because I know that um, it's very frowned upon mm. in virtually every motorsport. Yep. Um, and it's probably, to a certain extent, frowned upon, you know, by every other team that's not winning as a result of that decision yeah. in Formula One, regardless of whether it's allowed or not. <clears throat> I know that uh, there was, a, going back a few years ago, there was accusations made about the John Force team by the Pedragon, mm. by the two brothers. Yeah, yep. Um, and that created quite a, a stir in the NHRA. Mm. So, you know, it's a hard deal. I mean, the team really does pay them all a lot of money mm. and invest a lot of money, probably half a billion dollars or so yeah. to run those cars. And, you know, the championship's worth sponsorship dollars to them, yeah. merchandise dollars, etc. Mm. So, um, I, don't know. I don't know. It's a difficult one. I guess it would be... It would be very hard if you were in there with a one-car team yeah. and had to, um, you know, tolerate this sort of thing because, I mean, where do you draw the line? Mm. Um, you know, no. But my opinion is that Valtteri had, uh, up until the summer's break, he still hasn't won a race this year and he had his opportunity to forge his way in the championship. Nico Rosberg won a championship from the same car, the number two car, only two years ago. I think Mercedes... Yeah, I don't know whether Mercedes would let it happen again. I think it was different with Rosberg. Yeah. Look, I mean, the, the precedent the precedent is, is set now, and I think Ferrari have been guilty of it in the past, so we can't really go... I, 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 no, I understand. Look, I mean, um, Toto Wolf had this to say. Now, you know how at the end of our podcast we say all characters are impersonated poorly? <laughs> this is... Never this has that statement been so true. <laughs> Okay, this was Toto Wolf. As because we're not allowed to use BBC or Sky Channel um, uh, media uh, any content, so we have to we have to impersonate. This is Toto Wolf. <laughs> it's deflating for drivers. It's deflating for a team. But there's a harsh reality that also on such a day you can extend the lead by seven points more for a championship. 
that has been very tough and very difficult at times. I, you know, I always thought he was uh, German, not Scottish. Nah, he's he's Austrian. That <laughs> was Austrian. Austrian. That was Maybe Austrian. I should have thrown in. It's not a tumor. <laughs> 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 so there you go um five races to go um and we the, the sort of the u.s swing starts now we've got mexico miami and oh, the this austin, is gonna be so austin, funny to watch yeah, the austin they're race have as people well. throwing hot dogs and <laughs> get looking, your nuts get your nuts i'm looking forward to the miami race to be frank but anyway we'll, we'll see how that no girls no, no girls no 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 it's all over yeah but still I, i'm still interested <laughs> to see how it goes You know what the AFL Grand Final normally indicates is that we're one week away from Bathurst. Yeah, which is is why the passing of Bob Jane is uh, mm. even sadder. Yeah, um, yeah. Like you said, he arguably created the. Uh, yeah, it certainly was. Yeah, the very forefather of Australian mm. touring car racing. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he was racing <clears throat> even before Moffat was as well. You yeah, know? and he was very, very. There was a fierce rivalry between Bob Jane and um, and Alan Moffat yeah. as well. And that yep. sort of they really. That's where the Hold, Holden versus Ford, or back then it was General Motors in the Chevy. Yeah, Camaro. Camaro and the Mustang. Versus the Mustang. You yep. know, we hadn't really. The Falcon and and uh, Holden hadn't hadn't really started yet. Predates Group C, mm, yeah. Um, and Group C really is what made the Touring Car Championship. I think so. Anyway, mm. maybe it's because what it was what was around at the time. <coughs> the thing is, those cars were still very much a production car yeah. as opposed to now, where you know they're basically the uh, circuit racing equivalent of a door slammer. It's mm. a tube chassis transaxle yeah. you know what I mean They're, they've got more in common with uh, Riccadello sports sedan than they do with the production car that's true whereas yeah. you know from from XY right through to XE mm. or um, you know H whatever K H yeah, yeah HK was the yeah, HK. right through to the um, uh, VK mm. was the last of the big bangers eh? yeah yeah VK. Um, those cars were you know there was a lot of production car in those things mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I just want to point out that this uh, this next segment that <laughs> Nick's got here, <laughs> our, our top ten uh, Bathurst moments. Yep. He he has uh, used poetic license to put our there because <laughs> I had nothing to do with this list. <laughs> no, that's right. So look, this isn't an official list. It's not authenticated by anyone in, um, and it seems I very, places. very forward biased. No, no, it doesn't. Not really. A bit. Hang on. I tried not to be. I tried not to be. You know, we're paranoid now. Anyway, at number ten, I have got the 1990 Bathurst. 94. 94. Sorry, 94 Bathurst. Now I call it the birth of Craig Lowndes. Now he wasn't born in 94. He was born in 74, but in 1994, he came to Bathurst as a 19-year-old, hadn't turned 20 yet, and he passed John Bow with about 15 laps to go at the end of Mountain Straight, and it was, I remember watching this race as a kid, thinking, who the hell is this Craig Lowndes guy? Just turns up here, rookie, and's leading the race. Anyway, as it turned out, he got balked by a slower car, yep. and Bow got the spot back, and, and Lowndes would go on to finish. Now, believe it or not, but second... Hang on, hang on. There's a bit more to this story, mm. because I believe that Bow was low on fuel. They could have been, yeah. There, there was a bit more, like, basically, if Lowndes had pushed a bit harder, mm. um, he would have had it in the bag. Yeah, you know? okay. But, but in saying that, you do need to remember that... Tom Walkinshaw Racing, you know, was like the first team to have a seven-point jig, yeah. you know, doing all the aero testing, et cetera, et cetera. So they were a pretty advanced team. Mm. Um, obviously, he was a good driver, but you would probably argue that anyone that could drive yeah. should have been able to get the job done. Yeah. I'm not taking anything away from Lounsey, but, mm. you know, realistically, back in those days, that team was you know like goliath they were yeah they were headed by a gentleman called jeff gretch as well at the time and he was a he was a leader in that in that sort of field as well 
Believe it or not, he didn't come back the following year in a full time gig. He still only had the Enduros the following year. So in Lounsey, yeah, Lounsey. Yeah, still I, only I think had... Lounsey was chasing something over in Europe. Yeah, he didn't get there till. <clears throat> so he got a full time gig in '96, and then went off to Europe in '97. Yeah, but anyway, I think '94 was his. I call it the birth of Craig Lowndes. I anyway. think I think that Tom Walkinshaw was his manager. Mm, yeah, and I think the reason that they gave up. Uh, in Europe was basically because he had a really bad season yeah and the only way he could get a drive was if he bought one mm. and they didn't have any money well Lounsey and his family didn't have any money to it was yeah. like 750 grand or something stupid he was also partnered with a gentleman called Juan Pablo Montoya at the time as well and um, yeah arguably he, he, he was yeah he was the number two things. driver mm. yeah Yep. And I think all the attention was focused on yeah. setting the car up to suit yeah. Montoya. Yeah. Yeah. More than um so he probably did get a bit of a mm. you know, bum deal. Bum, yeah. Yep. Anyway, number nine, I've got the nineteen ninety two Bathurst race. A heavy shower near the end of the race <sighs> caused Jim Richards to crash and Mark Scaife. Uh, there was a number of crashes on the track. That and, wasn't just a crash, man. Yeah, the it was car a, was destroyed. Pretty much. <laughs> anyway. they, they never actually showed no, the they, crash. They didn't. They showed it entering the mountain and then exiting. It was smashed up. Like it was destroyed. There was no front on it. It had no <laughs> steering. It just drove straight off the track. Into another car. Yeah, there was so a was pole already, on yeah. it. It was like a parking lot. <laughs> Do you remember? It looked like a wrecking yard. I do, I do. It looked like you were in Maddington there or something, you know? <laughs> so, as we know, a red flag, you take the results back to the previous the previous lap, and um, he was deemed the winner. And look, when I think back about this, I always, I never appreciated the fact that Jim Richards said what he said, but if you, if you think <laughs> you're back... Not, you're not going to mention it. No, no. I, so, I, for those of you that don't know, right? So, they gave the runner-up to Dick Johnson... Yeah. And, yep. and Dick Johnson's speech went something along the lines of, uh, you know we won, I know we won, but we came second. That's and the crowd roared <laughs> like that. Then Jim Richards was trying to thank Nissan and everything, and everyone was just booing him and booing oh, him. throwing projectiles at him, <laughs> the poor like man. They were throwing whatever they could at him. <laughs> this is probably the birth of Mark, Mark Scaife, too, and explains why... <laughs> Mark Scape is the way he is. And Jim Richards' answer to the critics was, you're all a pack of assholes." Yep, that's I believe, exactly right. I believe right. that was the... <laughs> but when, we think, when I look back at that, that race, actually, I think, I, I think that um, he lost a friend that day. Danny Holm died that day at the track, uh, had a heart attack in the car. and Yes, he did. He, he, he managed to get through that, Jim Richards. They were good friends, and he did know about that, and I think he was a bit wound up about that, a bit emotional about that. So I think the crowd... The crowd took that on board, and a lot of those people that threw projectiles at him uh, made shirts up the following year and says, yes, I am an arsehole, and got Jim Richards to sign it. So, <laughs> there you go. I, All is forgiven. I, I, it would have... Yeah, I, I know. It just was... I don't know. That that whole... That Nissan GDR dominance yeah. was really, you know... And, and cams, everyone just threw so much weight on those cars yeah. to try and slow them down. Mm. Um, boys, next time that happens, there's a thing called a restrictor plate <laughs> or a boost limiting valve. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. Give them five pounds of boost, then we'll see how fast they are. <laughs> <laughs> so number eight is one of my fond memories. I, I remember this as a kid. Dick Johnson crashed heavily in qualifying at Forest Elbow. As you remember, he comes out of the corner there, clips the Armco with a right-hand front wheel and goes straight into the bushes. He ends up... Peter Brock gives him a lift back to the pits. <laughs> I don't know if people know that, but Peter Brock actually gave him a lift back and uh, bought another car off another team, another XC, painted it, the car. It, it was it, actually it, the year before's car. Yeah, yeah. That had been sold to another team. Yeah. He we, purchased it back. And, so before he built Green's Tough, he had another XE called mm, True Blue. Yeah. It was the last of the, the uh, True Blue series. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I believe he was sponsored by Channel 7 back in those yeah, days. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, yep. And obviously Palmer's tube mills. Tube mills, yeah. yeah. 
So I painted the car up and lined up with the grid the next day. It didn't help. They didn't finish the race that year, unfortunately. No, the paint was still wet, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> on the grid, and the paint was still still quite fresh. <laughs> they had the local TAFE, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Give they did hand. a couple of crosses during the, the, the news that night as well. Yeah. Actually I, showing, you I, know. I think we all stayed up all night yeah. <laughs> watching that. <laughs> it was Gary Wilmington said it's a brisk night here at yes. Bathurst and did the, <laughs> had the a, suit on and the <laughs> steam yeah. coming off him every time he spoke and yeah. who was the mechanic it was Bob Shepard I think was his was his crew chief and they were yeah. getting the motor back in the car so it was an amazing effort yeah they, really. they, they, were, they, were, they were talking about the paint not drying because it was so cold yeah it was yeah no that's right <laughs> All right, number seven here, I've got the 1980 Dick Johnson. This is what really made Dick Johnson, 1980 Bathurst, where he hit the rock, as you know. Uh, he qualified first on that day, was leading the race. Uh, it was early in the race. Now, it's never been, I think, the rock, how it ended up on the track, no one really knows. But there was a rock and a hard place. <laughs> he was stuck right in the middle of it. And um, It's interesting that you've... Um You've made mention of of eighty three mm. and eighty. Mm. This is this is the way Nick's mind works, listeners. Right. So so nineteen eighty. Right. The 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 joke is Dick Johnson became a rock star because yep. he hit hit the rock and yeah there was uh, over over seventy thousand uh, dollars raised by by uh, donations That's and correct. I think Ford matched them dollar yeah, for dollar. Edsel Edsel was watching. And uh, matched it dollar for dollar. Now, 1981 mm. is when Dick Johnson became a mountain man. Yeah, he won the following he, year. He won. He won the following yep. year. That's yep. correct. Yep. So uh, it's interesting <laughs> you haven't mentioned that. Is that your way well, of no, saying, I'm I, being unbiased? Uh, that's it. That's exactly right. But I did mention it here. I said, Johnson was able to rebuild his car and win the race the next year. There you go. No, oh, it's, it's part of the whole... Part of the whole rock though, star yeah. to mountain man journey. Yeah. <laughs> Number six, how can we forget the 1970 Bathurst? It's it's Alan Moffat's first win, his first win in in um, it's his first win ever at Bathurst, and and this is what secured him mm. the Ford sponsorship deal. I That's believe. correct. Yeah, he he uh, went to that race as a factory backed but privateer still. Mm. Yep, yep, and that so, was in the XW GDH yeah. Phase Two. There you go. So Alan Moffat's. Did they? I don't think they actually won anything in the phase three, did they? Yeah, the following year they won in they the phase did, three. They did, did they? Yeah, yep, in 71. They had the cardboard carton, beer carton stuck to the front of the car, if you remember, in 71. The cardboard? No? Mm, what? Yeah, yeah. So what's yeah, the story famous, there? Famous, it was a beer, a carton of beer got stuck to the front of the car. Someone flattened a carton of oh. beer, got stuck to the front of the car, and it was overheating. Were, no, it never overheated. The oh. pit, they were trying to call him in, saying the beer carton stuck, and Moffat wouldn't come in. He goes, "No, nah, it's cool." So when he had the pit next, they took the beer carton off. He said, "But the car never overheated." So there you Maybe go. the beer kept it cold. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, I've got the 1972 Peter Brock wins his first Bathurst 500 in the next year on Tirana. It would be the last 500-mile edition of that race as well. So in 73, we went to 1,000 kilometres. So we went from 800 kilometres to 1,000 kilometres the following year. <coughs> Number or the, the Whitnoom 1,000. <laughs> anyway... Yeah, see, look, my Ford bias isn't... If I was a Ford guy, I'd have number four as number one, really. But we've got the 1977 fa Ford famous 1-2 finish. <laughs> no, the no, you no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, and Bondi did the Valtteri Bottas thing, did not pass Alan Moffat for the lead. Alan Moffat had an alien car that mm. race. In the last many, many laps, he could have been... Passed by Bondy quite easily. Yeah, uh, Colin Bond. He was Colin Bond was a mm. team player, certainly. <coughs> Valtteri, and, no and, doubt. and there's a bit more to this story as well because who was Colin Bond driving for prior to joining the Moffat team? He was at over at Holden. <laughs> he was in the HDT team. Yeah, no, that's right. So, he was Brocky's go-driver. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, he um, did the team thing, um, and they got the famous formation finish in 1977. Number three, 2006, Craig Lands and Jamie Wincup. They win in the Triple Eight. I do sound like a Ford, bit of Ford bias here, but yeah. But Craig this, Lowndes, even yeah. um, uh, he he notes that this is his most memorable Bathurst yeah. win. Yeah, and it's only oh. weeks after Peter Brock's passing, so 
you know, it is it is a very, very famous win. Number two, how can we forget the 2014 Bathurst uh, race? Chas Most at Paul Morris in the second of the fact, well, not factory, but FPR cars. Definitely full bias. Yeah, <laughs> but this is a great race because Jamie Wincup chose not to pit with about 10 laps to go, even though his team are screaming at him. Paul Dutton is screaming at him to get in because he's going to run out of fuel. Jamie made the decision to stay out, um, and ultimately he got right up until just before Comrade Straight, before the car started coughing and spluttering, and, and Chaz got around him. And it was, you know, from last to first, so hats off to Chaz. Number one, I've got it's Peter Brock's ninth and last win at Bathurst. The World Touring Car Championship. It was also a round of the World Touring Car Championship, 1987. That's my... No, no. You're wrong. You're wrong. Because Peter Brock came yep. back to race the 427 Monaro mm-hmm. and win at Bathurst to get his 10th win. Yeah, okay, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the pe- listeners know what well, I mean. Paul Morris yeah. like signed up with 50 different teams yeah. last year so yeah. he could get three Bathurst yeah. wins in a... <laughs> Anyway, we're talking about... I don't about even know if he drove half the cars. <laughs> I think he was just in the pit bay. Anyway, 87 is my most memorable moment at Bathurst. It's Peter Brock's <clears throat> his ninth win and probably one of his greatest wins. It was a terrible race as far as weather went. There was finger pointing left, right and centre. Actually, on the day, two Ford Sierras won that race. Came first and second, and they oh, were disqualified. The Oxo, yeah, they were disqualified. Yeah, uh, for aerodynamic aids. Yeah, yeah, wheel arches weren't to spec. So. Yeah, mm. yeah, crazy. And that was the last time the Europeans came. That's right. Yeah, out here. Yeah, it's really sad actually in many ways because it was the last <clears throat> last time it was a round of the World Touring Car Championship went to Bathurst. So I, I tell you what, mm. how awesome would it be to see the British Touring Cars race over That'd here? That'd be awesome. I'd love to have that. I that is some ridiculous. You're you're allowed to for those of you that have never watched it. If you get the chance to, it mm. is incredible. You're allowed to run each other off the track <laughs> as long as you slow down and yield. <laughs> That's all it is. Like as long as you indicate. <laughs> No, you got to yield. You got to let them like you bump them off, and then you got to pull over and let them get, yeah, in, front get in front again. again. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. take them completely out of the race, destroy their car. As long as you stop and let them go in front, <laughs> no consequence. It is a great, great form of motorsport. And if you haven't seen it, get on YouTube because they they show the rounds uh, so, after on YouTube. It's a bit like the NRL. Mm. You can do any sort of tackle. Mm. Put someone's life in danger. If you're retiring and it's the grand final, you'll get to yeah, play. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about NRL, but that was blatantly um, very biased. That was, wasn't it? <laughs> what was that? That, there? Shoulder, that shoulder charge. That shoulder that, charge. And I don't know anything about NRL, but anyway. Yeah, a bit like the last goal. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Wrong. Anyway, MotoGP. MotoGP. Jorge had a bit to say this week, actually, in the Italian press. Well, we we... We're looking forward to another great race between mm. him and Marquez. Yeah. And unfortunately, fans like myself got shortchanged. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, whether it was um, uh, uh, Marquez's fault or not, that's I, I don't know enough about motorbike racing to say, to call that one. I, I just saw it as an incident and, um, you know, Jorge had a huge high side. But it was interesting, his comments this week regarding um, Petruzzi and why he got the ride at, at Ducati. Um, I thought it was a little bit a little bit disrespectful. But anyway, I'll read out what, what Jorge had to say. This was in the Italian press this week. Are you going to read it in Italian? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have remembered they have three-time world champion and they tried to give him what he you needed. Know, last time you tried with the accent. Come on, you can do a Dear George accent, no, can't you? No, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Instead, they were they were focused on increasing Dovizioso's salary as he had won some races and taken a second rider who was cheaper, Petruzzi. So it's pretty pretty um pretty out there those comments. Oh, I was I was amazed to hear that. I, I listen from watching George over the years. Mm. <clears throat> he. Uh, he likes to burn bridges. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's not going back there. No, he ain't ever going back there. <coughs> and he ain't ever going to a Daniele Petrucci's uh, Christmas party either. 
<laughs> I'm not quite sure why Petrucci felt the need to respond. I wouldn't have if I was him. But anyway, he did. He went on. You're going to do say, this with his accent? No. Oh, no, come no, on, no, Nick. No, you can no, pull the, this the, one off. The Toto Wolf ones. Uh, I'm really. <laughs> I don't think I can live with a ridicule. Yeah, I'll have a crack. Yeah, you go. <laughs> so, go on. So Petrucci, Petrucci responded with, When a Ducati chose me, I was the best Ducati rider in the standings, not in the sittings. And George had not yet won a race. I had done more podiums than him. I thought Ducati had made a logical choice. So I think they said... Petrucci is in front, and he costs one fifteenth of Lorenzo. Let's take him. Who wouldn't do that? <laughs> so he's on one million euros, obviously. Then, if he's one one fifteenth. <laughs> so, um, sounded like sushi mango, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the peel. <laughs> Shout out to uh, the sushi mango guys. Send so, no free tickets when you come into town. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. You know? Shoot them our way. <laughs> Uh, Valentino Rossi as well. He's been testing the 2019 Yamaha engine um, and was underwhelmed. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> did, did the engineers get up and apologise? I don't know. Was there I a press know. conference? <laughs> <laughs> to all the Yamaha riders, uh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> we not make power. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So he tried the first edition. Listen, and, listen, uh, before we go any further, I just want to make sure, right, there is no <laughs> Joe Rogan, Elon Musk. <laughs> no, it seems like it's not, doesn't there? <laughs> there is no no Joe Rogan, Elon Musk. Uh, uh, yeah, what's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, pedantics. Or shenanigans. Antics, shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> Penanigans. Any of that going on here? There is no blunts being passed between Nick and I. <laughs> or no whiskey either. And, you know, I know what everyone's asking, anyone that, that, that listens. Or if you don't know, what happened was that uh, uh, Elon Musk was uh, on, on the Joe Rogan podcast. Do two and a half hear, hours. Do you want to hear it? It's two minutes. Have two we got minutes. time to play it? I'm sure we've got time. We've probably got plenty of time. <clears throat> I'm just going to have a mad coughing fit while this is happening. Let's have a listen. And blunt. One, <laughs> but it seems pretentious, you know? That's the idea behind it. I bought it when I was in Mexico because I figured it would be a, a good size to hold joints. Or not. So is that a joint? It's or is it a cigar? Yeah, it's no. Okay. It's um, marijuana it's inside weird. of uh, tobacco. Okay, so it's like posh pot tobacco yeah. pot. You never had that? Yeah, I think I tried one once. Come on, man. You, want some <laughs> you probably can't because stockholders, right? I mean, it's legal, right? It's totally legal. Okay. How does that work? Do people get upset at you if you do certain things? There's uh, tobacco and marijuana in there. That's all it is. The the combination of tobacco and marijuana is wonderful. First turned on to it by Charlie Murphy and then reignited by Dave Chappelle. There you go. Plus whiskey. Haha, uh-huh. exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Balances it out. I mean, alcohol, alcohol is a drug. It's been grandfathered in. Well, it's not just a drug. It's a drug that gets a bad rap. Because if you just have a little, it's great. But there's not a lot of you out there. Like, everybody else seems to be, I mean, obviously, you make a lot of money. And there's a lot of people that make a lot of money. <laughs> you like that clock? Yeah. Pretty this dope, right? Great, this is a great clock. Yeah, you want one? I'll get you one. Sure. Okay. Done. I like weird things like this. Oh, this is the coolest. It's TGT promotion. What is this? TGT Studios? TGT Studios? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, a gentleman who makes all this by hand. Yeah, it's really cool. My study is filled with weird devices. Well, get ready for another one. All right. I'm sending it your way. Cool. You want a werewolf, too? I'll hook you up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I'll take one. One werewolf and one clock coming up. Do you think about your role in the culture? Because me as a person who never met you until today, I, I've always looked at you and like, wow, like, how does this guy just keep inventing shit? So, so we've researched this heavily, right? And apparently a blunt, mm. which I thought was just another name for a joint, is, is a 
a cigar that's hollowed out and filled with marijuana. Yeah, that's or, the or, or marijuana wrapped in tobacco leaf, really, if you think about it. <laughs> and I know, Nick, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Right? Why would you want to ruin the beautiful taste of marijuana with tobacco? <laughs> I wasn't thinking that, but anyway. <laughs> yes. Well, why would I do that? <coughs> anyway, so so those of you that follow Elon Musk would already know this, but he's copped a $20, $28 million, mm. and that's American dollars, yep. real, real dollars, fine, and been asked to step down as the chairman yeah. of... So, well, he's agreed to that. He has to. That's, that's, the, part of the, that's part of the settlement. Now, I'm, I'm not a full bottle on what happened, but, but I get the feeling that, well, I know for a fact that, that as a result of this, mm. the Joe Rogan interview, the share prices took a dive and he just happens to be buying the company back. That's correct. Yeah. So it played, smoking the blunt mm. on Joe Rogan's show, played into his hands yeah. effectively. But I, I think it's his commentary on Twitter as well that he was indicating that he was looking at doing that and he, that he had secured the funding already to do it to do it prior nor- to him doing it normally mm. if you do that yeah right because there's actually a famous uh, case in America where a investor seemed to know somehow that there was a takeover bid about to happen and he would buy a lot of shares in yep. that company that was about to be taken over. So normally when someone announces, hey, I, <coughs> I'm going to buy this company, yep. um, the share prices go up. Mm. So I don't understand, you know, like unless he announced that and then sold his shares, it wouldn't be logical for him to get fined for yeah, that's, that. that's a good point. I, look, I, look, I, I, think, I think it was the on. fact that he smoked a blunt yeah. on Joe Rogan's show. Certainly. Or maybe it was just that he was hanging out with Joe Rogan. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know, but nonetheless. Anyway, let's get back to the Moto G. Yeah, I just we, thought it was... We were talking about Moto G. That's we, right. we, we, were, were, we were. We, were we didn't even about... get to the race yet. <coughs> no, we didn't. We are talking about Valentino's underwhelming engine. Mm, mm. The Briggs and Stratton. You're going to do a Valentino impersonation? No, no, no. So this is what he said, but... I tried the first edition. I did two that. No, no anyway, that's terrible. <laughs> that's about what he sounds like. I tried the first edition of the 2019 engine. Yes, yes. Just squeeze your nuts a bit tighter. <laughs> but I think and I hope it's uh, not the final one. It's just a small modification because it's very similar. I hope to continue work because the engine for me is a problem for us. They have to make it better. They just need to get a Honda motor in here. That's what they need to do. I'm right? sure you, even if they tried a stationary Honda, you know, the, <laughs> <Stationary> <laughs> one of those stationary engines has got to make more power than that Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with a centrifugal clutch. I went to the Royal Show the other day. There was a couple of steam engines there that might have put it to shame. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Was there a race? Was there? Yeah, there, was was a race. Aragon, there was a race. Yes, there was a race. Aragon, and yep. uh, and unfortunately, Mark Marquez and George Jorge Lorenzo, mm. um, they uh, had had an uh, incident. Yeah, uh, yeah. You call it an incident. Coming together. <laughs> Coming together. <laughs> A merger, <laughs> a merger. So uh, Jorge's gone high side from that incident and wasn't able to continue on. He's actually been injured, injured his foot from that incident. Um, Dovi was leading most of the race. Uh, Marquez passed him with. I think, yeah, it was only three laps remaining. Um, it was actually good, they went backwards and forwards a couple of times. Yeah, it was a that. good yeah. fight towards it the was. end. Yeah, um, but you know, I mean, everyone. It's not just us. Everyone wants to see the Yamahas mm. get up. Yeah, and definitely. Just, yeah. They're just nowhere to be seen. Yeah, yeah, no. Dislocated toe was Jorge's injury. So that'll be interesting to see how... I'm not sure he can get back for the next race. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how Right goes. foot or left foot? <clears throat> Don't know. Can't tell you. Hmm. Look, we look forward to next year anyway. The next race is in Thailand, which is this weekend. So Sunday the 7th of October. Oh, then they keep an off eye to for Japan that after that. So, yep. Yep. All right. So the uh, on the local news, mm, <laughs> yep. nostalgias were cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit disappointing, <clears throat> to be honest. Look, I, I actually, um, you, you've I actually, put in the notes here. You basically 
thrown the Bureau of Meteorology oh, that's under the bus. Oh, I'll call them road train. They were absolutely shocking. <laughs> but hang on a second. Poor, poor Ray Trisha <coughs> had no choice but to cancel the event on Friday because mm-hmm. um, it was basically the second coming of Christ was happening on Sunday. And then Sunday turned out to be blue sky from horizon to horizon. Uh, well, on one day... Well, he had to call it at some point. Yeah, yeah, just because the uh, roll racing was on. Well, that got cancelled as well. Yeah, that's correct. So that was... That was Saturday, but... And I understand Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Saturday yeah. did rain. Well, yeah, but I, look, I had a customer um, basically telling me that it was on and I looked outside and <laughs> what no. it's not going to happen man no, no. there is a thunderstorm no. above our heads but poor Ray <laughs> had, had no choice but to cancel the event given the information from Bureau of Meteorology you know this is Friday and then we get to we get to Sunday and it's blue sky from horizon to horizon so thank you very much Bureau of Meteorology that event has been rescheduled for the 27th of January 2019 27th of Jan. Yep, 2019. So test and tune in a couple of weeks, 13th and 14th of October as well on the, at the track. Um, and then the Power of Palooza. Power Palooza. Power Palooza. on the, the 27th. <coughs> Invitation only, I believe. That's correct, yep. Yeah, not to attend, but you can go watch. Oh, you don't need to be oh, invited. Oh, you don't need to be invited to watch. <laughs> you can it's watch. only if you're competing. Yes. So, so how does that we're affect We're going to be the talking to Ray in... Non points event. That's correct, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. But we'll be talking to Ray in the <clears throat> coming episodes, actually. We was, well, I, had, I had scheduled to go to the Nostalgias, as I've been saying, and um, yeah, it didn't turn out. We're going to do an interview with Ray and a number of other races, but it uh, wasn't to be anyway, unfortunately. All right. B.A., you're talking about the BA? Mate, I have been uh, very ill the last couple of weeks, mm. as you can tell by the coughing and spluttering. Yep. <clears throat> and I finally felt like I was getting over this, mm. and I've got a toothache now. Oh, yeah. Right? Yep. The, the only reason I'm here is because of the goodness of Panadine Forte oh, yeah. and oil of cloves. <laughs> <laughs> My whole mouth is actually numb because I've used so much of the oil of clothes. I didn't know you weren't meant to gargle it. All right. Wow. <laughs> okay. But anyway, our listeners probably don't know the car has been tech. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. So, so there's, a, there's another, <coughs> a fair bit of work that you did do before. Yeah. So, before. so what happened was the reason I got sick uh, was because basically it wasn't just me. It was uh, me... Uh, probably not Nick, because Nick Nick doesn't seem to show up for anything really. But oh come on, <laughs> it was D- Dave, uh, Travis, new yep. to the crew, Travis, <coughs> and uh, and Trev, mm. um, and we were putting in. So I'd go to work, do my usual um, deal, go home, uh, spend a little bit of time with um, Nicholas and Nicole, mm. and uh, head back to work and work till uh, two in the morning. And we managed to get the BA. Have you put the video up? No, no, no I'm waiting to <coughs> get a bit more work done. Okay. Mm. Uh, but basically got the BA from a bare chassis Yep. Um, to the point where we took it to the Motorplex for a free tech day mm. and got signed off on. Yep. So she's got current tech. I've got a current license. I've got, I had my medical and that. So the next step now, I've got the four link where I think it should be. I need to write a program for the shocks mm. um, and write a tune up for the engine. And the motor that's sitting in it now is um, uh, uh, Doris, I think. Yeah, d- Doris is that what she's called? What's the one written on the the tray, the tool tray? Well, one one's Dino. Yeah, so it's Doris. Doris, yeah. yeah Dino's yeah. written on the tray, but that's not the motor that's in there. Yeah, that. so um, I'm going to pick Dino up on Thursday. Dino's stripped down to a bare block. And um, we'll start putting Dino back together mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully have Dino in there for the start of the season. As far as, pardon me, <coughs> as, as you can see, the cough's still hanging around. As far as... Um, uh, the rest of the bits we need, the wheels and tyres, have not left the US yet. Yep. Um, there is some other parts over there, but and we still got a little bit of work to do 
Um, and like I said, I want to I want to wrap the car white. Yep. Because good guys wear white. Mm. You know. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to make the first meeting, but we're going to give it a crack. Yeah. <coughs> um. I, yeah, I think we've pretty much got pretty much got everything except for the wheels and tires. Yep. Yep. No, a lot of work went into the car actually. So thanks to all those guys. I'm surprised that you didn't put the video up. No, no. I want to wait till we get a bit more content. There's a bit. It's pretty short. There's not much there. But yeah, I'll, I'll wait till we get. I want to wait till the car's pretty much completed, and then we'll put one video up. Oh, righty, mm. okay. Yep. yep. But we've got a little bit of work here and there, mainly mm. just put the uh, other engine back together and. And scale it, yep. square it and scale it once we've got the wheels and tyres. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, we've uh, gone through everything else, all the heim joints, the brakes, um, the trans, diff. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the other thing that I'm waiting on is the diff gears. Oh, okay. Because um, obviously we're going from a 34 and a half inch tyre to a 30 inch tyre. Yep. <coughs> The you know I need to put taller gears in it. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how we go, and uh, you know it'll be interesting to see how many cars are going to be running the three one fives, and whether they end up running three one five and two seven five, or they end up canning the the pro radio because it seems like. Um, there's a bit of a push on the east coast yeah to drop pro radio and just run 275 mm. um which is you know it's a bit sad considering you know jeremy martin and mm. and uh, the other guys and you know that that you know we've, we've broken into the threes but the motorplex format's a little bit different we're going to be running a quarter mile here which is something that they don't really do yeah anywhere else in the world but yeah. you know we'll see how we go yeah Yep. yep. Yeah, I think it, what's going to be really cool about this is being able to see um, how quick we can run, uh, and then being able to draw a comparison to see whether the radial tire affects the performance as much as being suggested. Because there's a lot of talk about, you know, the small tire mafia and small tire this, small tire that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But with a big slick, um, there's a lot involved in in how you manage the power, uh, as opposed to with the radial. The, the slick is prone to tire shake, and it's yeah. because you don't make enough wheel speed. Mm. The radial is prone to spinning. It's because you make too much wheel speed. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm planning on running this deal with no traction control. Okay. We're just going to set it up and send it just like we would if we were running door slam. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be cool to see how um, <clears throat> how we go mm. if if we can sort of get it to work because you know as anyone that knows the car knows um, there's <coughs> there's not really anywhere you can pull any weight out of it because yeah. it's a steel bodied car and you know we never really ran a lot of ballast in it mm. so um, you know we're going to be pretty much a door slammer weight yeah um, and I know I, I don't know if you caught uh, uh, Donald Long's interview I've seen bits of it yeah um, and and so Donald Long uh, the the reason that he's been pushing the radial scene so hard is because he and um, Billy Glidden had an argument a few years ago Billy Glidden believed that the um, uh, I think it was a 29 29 by 10 and a half time yeah. was, was the future of drag racing I think a lot of people did that, really? Mm. <clears throat> I honestly don't understand any of this, like <laughs> the way I see it. I, I like Potung's rules. Yep. Still roof and quarter panels. I don't care about anything else. As long as you got those two bits, we're good yep. to go. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I, I mean, he he made the point in that interview of saying that he believes that radial races are smarter than um, pro mod races, mm. right? That he honestly believes that. And you would have to, you know, you'd have to agree to a certain extent, considering um, the performances of uh, our our, yeah. our our hero, oh Jeremy, <laughs> no, Jeremy. no, um, oh Stevie Fast. Stevie oh, Fast. There's, a, there's a whole lot of people that would, you know, that we could name that would would well fit st- into that. Stevie Fast, you mm. definitely say that, um, you know, his first outing. 
NHRA, mm. he top qualified. Yeah. So yeah. Donald Long has got fuel for that argument, um, but he also had arguably the best door slammer crew chief, mm. you know, crewing for him. And there was a lot of controversy because uh, Al Billis gave a tune-up to... Oh, I forget the guy that ultimately took <coughs> Stevie out, even though Stevie's car broke the transmission, I believe. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of controversy about, you know, from the pro mod guy's point of view saying, you know, what, well, this guy thinks he's hot shit because he's a radial racer. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, yeah Donald Long believes that, that that is the case, that the, um, the pro mod guys have got nothing on the radial guys. Mm. I think he says pound for pound. A radial car will drive around it. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what we find with the data that we had from running the big tyres yeah. to the small tyres. I think it's all going to come down to how the, the track is prepped. Yeah. If the track prep's there, um, then you should be able to run fast. But in saying that, the quickest pass at uh, No Mercy... is a lot slower than... than 70... Um, yeah, 78, I think, or 7. It might even be low 70s. I don't don't have it here. I don't. They didn't dip into the 60s. No, no one around. in the 60s at all. Yeah. And pretty much everyone that was racing was in the 80s or yeah, 90s. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, the, the, the atmospheric conditions, track conditions, air, they all play into it. Yeah. And the only yep. thing that's going to change now, moving forward is uh, whether they change the rules. Mm. So if, if Donald, you know, and, and this is the problem that he's got, you could pull weight out of the turbo cars to let them run faster. You could pull weight out of the blower cars to let them run faster. What are you going to do with the nitrous cars? Mm. Nitrous cars are already down to, you know, a ridiculous minimum weight. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a hard gig to try and keep the parity. Mm. I'm sure the NHRA has the same problem with, um, with the... Uh, uh, pro mod, pro mod, yeah. but but that they have the added bonus that they've got a BLV boost limiting valve on the turbo cars, mm. um, and they say that is the boost, that is the turbo size, and that is the boost you're going to run. Yep. And with the blower cars, they've got a limited overdrive. Mm. So he's right, weight wise, the radial cars look good on paper. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but when you take into consideration the uh, boost limit. And the overdrive limit with with the pro mod, then it changes everything. Yeah. But in saying that, who won the last event? A nitrous car. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, and it was a blower and nitrous car in the final. That's correct. Yeah, right. yeah. I think there was a breakdown of the cars in the top eight and in, in the in t- sorry, sorry from semis, sorry from quarters on, and it was two blown cars, two three nitrous cars, and. Three, yeah, three turbo cars yeah. or the breakdown. So it was Good what, what Donald was trying to say was, I got the parity right. Yeah. So, no, I think yeah. I think that he has, and I think that um, you know, look, I I love what it's done for the sport, mm. right? Because it's breathed some some fresh air into it, um, and <laughs> it's cool to run the numbers that they they've run in the past. Yep. You know on that size tyre, you can't argue that that's not a cool thing. And that that, that Malibu of Mark Mickey's, mm. whether you like him or not, that is cool as. Oh, yeah. You definitely. know what I mean? That yeah. thing looks like it should be parked in the car park, you know? Mm. <coughs> so yeah. he has done uh, a huge uh, service to uh, the sport of drag racing, Donald yeah. Long, you know? Yeah. He really has. But um, when you break it down as to whether, you know, uh, it's harder to run a radial tyre than it is a slick, I'm not convinced. Mm. I want to see for myself whether it is or not because tyre shake is a pain in the arse and getting the wheel speed right is a pain in the arse. Now, if we could just draw it um, and run some sort of, uh, you know, engine limiting device, traction control, whatever, so draw our pinion speed curve, then it'd be a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. But... We're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Radial racing is the opposite. You're not trying to achieve pinion speed. Mm. You know what I mean? You're trying to actually just keep the tyre hooked. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Yeah, no, me too. Me too, definitely. 
All right, um, just on a closing, another podcast that's hit the airwaves in WA. Uh, it's called, no, the motoring podcast it is. It's called The Pod Filter. So check that out at iTunes as well. <laughs> so, Adam and Simon. You know what? I only just got the name. Yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> the Pod Filter. <laughs> We've been talking about it for a week. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Adam and Simon, go check them out. Um, I and, was uh, thinking of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious and then it just oh that's what they mean a pod filter <laughs> so yeah go check them out at iTunes and uh, on because, Facebook as well it's because I'm not from a turbo background <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, WA Suspensions. Um, uh, I'm gonna do, I didn't write them down. Uh, all fast torque converters. Um, Actually, big shout out to Stewie for um. <coughs> For hooking us up with some uh, Ibuck springs for yes, the car. Yes, for the car. I saw them. They looked awesome, mm. actually. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to Stewie and also for helping us out at the last podcast, the 24 Hours on Lemons. That was awesome, actually. Um, we should try and think about doing that next year. I I, um, I think it was pretty pretty cool what they do down there. Uh, also, so, yes, yeah, sorry, getting back to our sponsors. Um, Shift Kits Australia, Benzene Detailing, um, challenge batteries, performance turbos, um, and monster talk. So, CRD nitrous as well. Sorry, forgot Craig. Sorry, Craig. We should uh, we should look at putting nitrous on the BA. I believe that it's unlimited power adders. <laughs> I've been told I saw that. Yes. <coughs> All right, Simon, I think we'll call this podcast uh, done. So thanks for coming in. Thanks for your time. And, uh, yeah, sorry about all the coughing. No, that's all right. No <laughs> dramas. All good. And um, we will see you at the next one. And, uh, yeah, jump on our website. <clears throat> Go to iTunes as well, uh, Stitcher, Podbean, wherever you get your podcasts from, we're there. So get on or go to our website, the podcast is always there. Go to our YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook page. All right, Simon, thanks for coming in. No worries, Nick. All right, we'll end on this. See you guys. <laughs> See you later. Talking power, stresses, all characters and events on this podcast, even those based on real people, are entirely fictional. All celebrity voices are impersonated poorly. We do not encourage street racing or the use of turbochargers.